Welcome back, Hack to Hollow. This bit of kit is known as an RGB LED. Now, last week, we were working with individual LEDs of different colors. So you'll see here on the right, we have a red, green, and blue LED. And if you recall, they each have a positive anode and a negative cathode, which goes to ground with some sort of current limiting resistor. So the RGB LED is essentially three LEDs in one. What we get here is the ability to create any color in the rainbow, provided we pass the correct code to each of the red, green, and blue legs of this RGB LED. Now, typically, they are called RGB for red, green, and blue, but you do have to be careful when looking at the legs of these things, because if we see here closely, we have our red, blue, and green legs. So technically, it is an RBG instead of an RGB, but that doesn't really matter. We'll still be able to work it out. And what's nice is that they have a common cathode, which means there's only one pin that needs to go to ground. Now, we still do need our current limiting resistors. However, we're going to connect them to each of the three legs of our RGB and then have those go over to our pins on the Arduino. I want to note something today that we are going to be using the PWM pins that are noted by that little tilde that is on the uh, Arduino. And the reason for that is we are going to be analog writing to each of these pins, which means that we'll be passing a value somewhere between 0 and 255. Now, why does that matter? Well, if we take a look at this website, any color can be represented by a three-digit RGB value that ranges from 0 to 255. So our example here, red, pure red, is 255, and then the green and blue legs would be completely off. Pure green and pure blue follow similar suits. However, if you wanted to pick an intermediate color, let's say something in the violet range, you'll realize that you'll be mixing some level of red and blue. And depending on the shade of purple, you'll be introducing different values as you go. So those values between 0 and 255 can only be passed if you're working with PWM pins on the Arduino. All right, so how do we code something like an RGB LED? You could create a variable for each of the three legs that are plugged into the Arduino, but today's lesson is going to teach you about something called an array. An array is simply a list of things that are of the same variable type, and it has a little bit of interesting syntax in the language we use for Arduino. So what we are going to do is create an array of byte variables. You have to follow it with the open and closed brackets, and we are going to set it equal to the three pins that our LED is plugged into, 3, 5, and 6 respectively. And that's each of the red, green, and blue LEDs. Another thing we're going to create up here, and you'll see why in a little bit, is another variable of the byte category called pin count. And the pin count essentially is just going to be the number of things in our array. There are three legs to this RGB LED. The next portion of this discussion is going to focus on indexing and something called a for loop. So let's start with this idea of indexing. Firstly, let's understand that we are going to start counting from the number 0 when we are coding as opposed to the number 1. So if we take a look at the LED pins array, 3, 5, and 6 represent the pins our LED is plugged into. The number 3 is in the 0th position, 5 is in the 1 position, and 6 is in the 2 position. So even though there are three things in there, we actually count them 0, 1, 2, as opposed to 1, 2, 3. Next, we're going to come down to the void setup section where we usually initialize our hardware. Now because we are using an LED, we are going to have to call the pin mode and create those legs as outputs. Now we could absolutely come in here and write pin mode three times and set each leg as an output. However, I want to show you something called a for loop, which usually goes hand in hand with arrays, because for loops can go through a sequence a specific number of times, and they require three things in order to call them appropriately in this coding language. So if we take a look inside the parameters of the call to four, we're going to see the first declares a byte variable called pin. 
Now, like any other variable, we can call that anything we want. And typically, programmers will use something like the letter I in this position. But I want it to be as obvious as possible for our newcomers. So we're going to call that variable pin. And we're going to use it to keep count of how many times we've gone through the for loop. And we're going to set it equal to where we want to start counting from. And in our case, we want to start counting from zero. So we're going to set it equal to zero so we can look at the first thing in our array. Next, we have to tell the counter how high to go up to. And we want to say pin until it is less than three. Three is the pin count from up above. Now, if I were to add something to my array, all I would have to do is increase the number of pin count and I can count as high as I need to go. The third part tells me how to count. Now this is a quirky little um, thing about this language. I want to count by ones, so writing pin plus plus means that every time I circle back to the top of this for loop, I increase that pin variable by the number one. Now, what am I actually doing each time I go through this for loop? That's on line seven. I'm simply going to make a call to pin mode, and inside the parameters you're going to see I'm going to set each LED in that array up top as an output. So if we follow the logic here, the first time we go through, that variable pin is going to be equal to zero. So it will say pin mode, the zeroth value in LED pins, which is that number three, it's going to be set as an output. Now the next time through that loop, that pin plus plus is going to turn pin from zero to one. So now we enter number seven again, and it says pin mode LED pins one as an output, and that'll set LED five as an output. Pin plus plus brings pin to number two now, and we go through the loop one more time, and we set LED six as an output. Now the next time through, pin plus plus comes up to the number three. Well, now that breaks that second variable there, pin being less than pin count because 3 is not less than 3 anymore it is equal to 3 and now the for loop breaks and we exit alright so let's hop into the main loop now and figure out what this code is actually going to do now that we've initialized our hardware so we took a look at some RGB values earlier which will declare a specific color now every time you want to write a color to an LED like this you will need three values for red green and blue and mixing them together will give us our various colors. So in this sequence, essentially what I'm going to do, and maybe some of you are already looking at this and figuring out what's going to happen, is I'm going to use the analog write function because remember, that's going to allow me to set the value of each LED leg. Instead of it being high or low, which is on or off, I'm going to set it to somewhere in between, which is how we finished our last challenge by dimming individual LEDs. In this case, however, by writing various values from 0 to 255, I can mix my colors and make this work. So if we take a peek here, my first situation, I'm going to write the red leg to 255, the green leg to 0, and the blue leg to 0. And in this case, that should give me the color red. I'm going to wait two seconds. In this case now, I'm going to create green. And in the last instance, I'm going to create blue. Now I do want to point out, the way that I wired up my LED earlier is going to have allowed this to happen. Remember, I took my red leg and I went to 3. I then came over and went to my green leg and went to 5, and finally finished with my blue leg going to 6. It just felt a little bit more intuitive to me to wire that way. This way as I ascended from 3 to 5 to 6, I was going from R to G to B, just like my codes are needing. So if I go here and I run my simulation and get the code out of the way, you'll see that I'm cycling between red, green, and blue, which is pretty cool. And your first challenge is going to be to simply go over to that RGB color codes chart on the previous page and enter in various values for red, green, and blue and have them cycle through to see what types of colors you can make. Okay, so here is the big challenge of the week. Last week I showed you how to use a potentiometer as a dimmable switch to control the brightness of each of three LEDs. This week you're going to use your three potentiometers as a color mixer. So instead of mapping the value and having it represent the brightness, 
you're going to map its value, which if you remember was 0 to 1023, you're going to map it over to 0 to 255, and those values now are going to allow you to make various colors as you spin them on your RGB LED. If you need to look back to any of the wiring diagrams or previous code, look at last week's challenge for help.